All right, all. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more background about why I'm doing what I'm doing with these videos, please watch the intro video. It explains everything, uh, I guess. Um, but first, I want to get into talking a little bit about optimism. And when I talk to people about optimism, I always want to start from the same point that I got introduced to it. Um, I read a book uh, that was called Learned Optimism by Martin Seligman. Um, I would go on to have Martin Seligman for a professor. That was a great experience. Um, and one of the earliest things that he discusses is way, way before he came up with a, a theory of learned optimism, he came up with a theory of learned helplessness. Okay, And this was the idea that people could learn, um, or in this case, uh, dogs could learn, that there was nothing, there were situations where there's just nothing you can do, so you might as well not try. Um, and uh, if you want to read more uh, about that, you can uh, just Google Marty, Martin Seligman, Dogs Learned Helplessness. Uh, it's kind of a rough story, um, and I only have a few minutes here, so I don't really want to get into it. Um, but that was in the 1960s. And uh, it took much longer on the other end to sort of coalesce around a theory that if you could learn to be helpless, if you could learn there's nothing I can do in a situation, it is also possible to learn to be hopeful. That that is not just uh, a, a thing that you exert no control over. It is something that you can train and you can work on. And um, like anything else for training, it's not like... Um, you know, it's not like you walk into the gym and all of a sudden you can bench press 400 pounds, okay? Um, if that's like your goal or your skill that you're trying to develop, the strength that you're trying to develop, it takes time, it takes practice. Uh, and so I'm going to introduce to you just like a little way to get started um, in practicing. The fundamental um, concept of optimism, as Seligman and others um, have developed it is that you have an emotional part of your brain that is a that is unconscious that responds to uh, situations out in the world without you exerting any control over it okay so you're just gonna be hit with emotions and I think probably a lot of us are um, every day hit with a number of different emotions um, the conscious part of your brain the other part of your brain starts trying to explain why do we feel this way? Why don't why why am I angry right now? Why am I sad right now? Why do I feel so much joy? Okay, and it reaches for <clears throat> what's whatever's uh, easiest. In fact, it has little patterns uh, knocked in that it goes to over and over again, right? So uh, if I give you an example, you know, um, let's say. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was uh, traveling uh, about a month ago. I was going through Norway and stuff. I lost my luggage. Uh, I was without my luggage for three days. And, of course, I was really upset about this. It's no one likes not having their luggage with them. Uh, it seems like a trivial thing at the moment. But, um, and so I started to try and explain it to myself. And I raged at United Airlines, okay? So... To a certain extent, I displaced it, but I also thought, oh, how could I be so stupid? And I started to review all sorts of little mistakes that I had possibly made that sort of caused this to happen. And fundamentally, um, this influencing that explanation is what optimism is about. All of us have pessimistic explanations, and all of us have sometimes optimistic explanations. We have situations where it's easier for us to grasp at one, and... Um, situations where it's much more difficult. So the easiest way to get started and get a handle on what's going on is to just simply start getting in touch with what emotions are you feeling, okay? Start assigning them a word. Um, you know, are you, in certain situations, do you find yourself angry? Do you find yourself sad? Do you find yourself feeling hopeless? Um, do you find yourself feeling great joy or, or great engagement? Or uh, when do you feel love? Okay, it's on both sides. Uh, you want to be able to capture that. 
and then um, be able to separate that feeling from what you think about what's going on, okay? And if you can get a hold of those two pieces of information, um, you know, this can be just like a little journaling exercise, like this happened today, here's the feeling it gave me, and um, what kind of thoughts do I have as a result of that? You know, what do I, what do I think about that? So if I give you an example, uh, as a sports sports example, um, you know, I went to practice today and I had a really good practice, and um, that made me happy. And um, you know, I might think that uh, as a result of that, I might think well, things are going really well right now. Um, I really like my coach. I really like the team I'm on. I really like, you know, the the uh, teammates I have. And um, finally, I might think, you know, I'm really, I'm really on, on the right track right now. Okay, so that's just an example and a and a quite uh, positive example of something that's going on. Um, but just getting a handle on these emotions, and then the kind of thoughts that you have a result of it is a really good start to optimism. We'll get more into how you can uh, break down some of these explanations and a little bit more, we'll, we'll, we'll keep uh, broadening a little bit um, what, uh, what kinds of useful pieces of optimism there are for athletes. Until then, thanks guys and see you soon.